see um, a lot of new faces, which is great. Um, Cause again, we're not, <coughs> excuse me, no Lassica had a cough. These things seem to pop up right as I'm starting the lunch alerts. Um, so, excuse me. Last week, um, we um, kind of went up to 30,000 feet and we did a, a, an overview of the funnel. And um, as anticipated, the reviews were all over the place for that one. Some people really liked it because they had not really been exposed to the concept of the deal funnel and you know how messaging needs to um, vary at, at different stages of the engagement process with the prospect. And other people just didn't think it was a good fit for, for a lunch and learn where we focus on um, takeaway tactics. You know, we try to just provide you with one nugget that's worth something, worth your time each week um, and can, can uh, contribute to your social selling process. So since we do have first timers on today's call, I'll just go into it. Um, we start these things off with a brief overview of what social selling is, and then we get right into kind of the nugget of the day today that's gonna to be contact strategy. Um, I'll get into that, but basically, um, you know, what is your strategy once you have a new prospect? What is your messaging strategy? How many messages over, over what time? And what's the goal? Um, that's something that um, I think is rarely mapped out as it should be as part of a, a focused social selling program or any marketing outreach, uh, quite frankly. And then um, we'll just hop into the Q&A. So <clears throat> for those of you who are um, first time attendees, who am I, why should you care? Um, start this just every week. I, I've, I've spent uh, my career in deal origination. That's been a lot of different things over, over the course of a 20 year career. Um, you know, I was on the phone with, with somebody today and we were talking about marketing and this person had a marketing degree and and they're coming on board with their agency because the world of marketing has just completely changed over the past 10 years. And so um, I've had a front row seat to all of that when it comes to deal origination, um, going from cold calls to where we are now with this evolving um, practice of social selling that is so relevant in today's post COVID world um, as everybody tries to figure out how exactly we should go about deal origination without the um, conferences where you can, you can make these contacts at a at a snack bar, as somebody was saying to me yesterday in a conversation. Um, what is the point of social selling exactly? We're, we're leveraging all of the data, all of the information that's available out there um, to kind of automate the top of the funnel when it comes to identifying your prospects, um, bringing them into your ecosystem, and sending them you know, targeted messaging at diff different points in the funnel so they become aware of who you are, what your value prop is, so that ideally you're spending your time on the phone, you're spending your time you know, on a Zoom or in a meeting um, after the prospect has become familiar with you, has become comfortable, um, and really scaling that process, which is something that I think was, was relevant in this pre-COVID world, but today everybody is, is really trying to come up with their own strategy for nailing this process. Um, <clears throat> I like to focus on primary prospects, um, and referral prospects. So if you're a business broker, we have a lot of, I think, buyers on the call today, um, buyout. Really, if you're focused on, you know, with, with our agency and with BN Digital and, and BizNexus, we focus on the world of business acquisition and sale. So you could be an intermediary or you could be an independent buyer. You could be buyout. Um, everybody's welcome. If you're looking at, at deal origination, this is the process that, that we follow. So um, you go after proprietary deal origination that's going after business owners who might be in a position to think about exit planning, evaluation and sale, and then the referral prospects who are going to contribute um, to the, giving you an, an ongoing stream of those primary prospects on an ongoing basis, financial advisors, accountants, lawyers, et cetera. And those referral prospects wind up being more valuable over time than, you know, in my opinion, whatever proprietary outreach strategy you have. Um, the five stages of social selling that we, we cover, um, and we try to zero in on you know, one or two stages for each of these uh, lunch and learns, um, but you wanna start with optimizing your profile, your online brand to meet the end needs of, of your prospect, right? Especially on LinkedIn, you see a lot of people who have online resumes. That's what LinkedIn was five years ago. Like today, you need to make sure that your, your LinkedIn, it's, almost, it's not, 
it's not your website, but as part of a, a, a social selling program, it can be much more valuable than a website. Um, you want your LinkedIn profile in particular to speak to the pain points of your end prospect and to be a clear resource for the needs of that end prospect. So that's really what goes into the optimized phase. Targeting, nailing down who that primary prospect is, who are the referral prospects who can deliver that primary prospect on an ongoing basis, what online pools are they hanging out in, what real world pools are they hanging out in, how do we target them, how do we get in front of them, and then building campaigns, very specific campaigns <clears throat> for each target persona, and then running those campaigns, nurturing each prospect so they become familiar with who you are, what you do, what your offering is, so that when they're ready um, to reach out, you are front and center, you're first in line to um, capture, right? To, to get that lead off of Facebook, off of Twitter, off of LinkedIn, um, out of your online Rolodex and into a, a real world engagement, a real world relationship. And keeping these going at all times, they're not necessarily happen happening sequentially. You need to be firing on all pistons with a program like this at, at all times. Um, the end goal, again, is to get the phone call, to get the meeting, to get them into that real world engagement. Um, we're going to, we got a lot of great feedback with the, the Biz Nexus Lunch and Learn. So I'm briefly just going to touch on this. Um, when there's something of value, because we're focused on value here, that um, we can share with, with our, our webinar attendees, we're going we're gonna to slip that in here. So Biz Nexus, we had a big release last night. Basically, the referral link, link that I, I mentioned last week, that is, that is now live, right? So when you log in, you can you click on this button up here, um, and that's going to take you to the overview for your referral link, how it works. I'm not going to go into that right now. <clears throat> Just know that you can get a lot of free stuff. If you're a broker, you can get a free boosted profile. You can get a free boosted listing for each sign up that you, you bring to BizNexus. Uh, if you're a buyer, you get free uh, full access to our premium features and matching and search functionality, et cetera. Um, BN Digital, one thing that has been really um, popular in this new world that we're in has been strategic buyer origination, right? So if you have a deal that's a match for strategic buyers, they're very, very active in today's environment, private equity as well. Um, we're doing a lot of email um, outreach to identify buyers or buy side clients for, for intermediaries. So just know that's out there, check it out. Um, you can always do that at biznexus.com or BN Digital. So on to the nuggets for today. We are kind of hanging out in this area here, building, nurturing, capturing. And we're doing that by just walking through contact strategy. Again, I, I come up with these on a weekly basis based on you know, what we're hearing through our agency, what the, what the pain points are that we're seeing with our client base and the prospects who come to us. Um, and it, it's, it's surprising how many people don't have a set strategy for managing the contacts to the funnel. I'm not going to revisit the concept of the funnel. If you don't know what a funnel is, go back to last week's uh, webinar at bn.digital and just watch it. We have it up there for free. But really with any prospecting strategy, so if you're going after that primary prospect of a business owner, you want to have a very defined contact strategy that you know, it spans multiple channels and it should be at least you know, four to 10 touches, four to eight touches per prospect, right? You want to map that out. What does it look like? How are you getting to them? What messaging are you giving them at the top of the funnel? How are you pulling them down right to the point of conversion, right? And in today's environment, you know, pre, pre COVID, our campaigns were much longer than they are today because this world is changing um, much more quickly today than, than it was. So you want to be aware of, of how your messaging is landing at any given moment in this environment. But again, the goal of the contact strategy that we're going to be walking through today is to get the in-person meeting, to get the demo, to get the Zoom in this environment. But whatever, whatever that is for you and your sales process, the demo, the in-person meeting, um, that's, that's what this is for. So I'm literally just going to give you a few examples of, of what I like. Um, one for you know, the business owner prospect on LinkedIn, one for the referral prospect on LinkedIn, and then a sample of what you can do with direct email outreach. And that's going to be it. Then we can hop right into Q&A. Again, these things are, are short and sweet. So with a business owner, 
If you're on LinkedIn and you have Sales Navigator and you're looking to engage with this platform, hopefully you've already mastered the, the targeting and, and how to go about that. And um, maybe you've saved some searches, maybe you've created some lists, but when you identify someone who, who is your own prospect, you want to not only invite them to connect, make sure you're strategically viewing their profile, right? When people, and who hasn't checked out the who's viewed me on LinkedIn, if you see somebody there, that's your, your jumping top of mind, right? So throughout a contact strategy process, if you're talking about LinkedIn, you want to pop in and, and um, view a high value prospect when you can, right? The invitation should be something that is, again, top of the funnel. Uh, this prospect doesn't know who you are. You want to highlight whatever overlap you have in your industry, um, whatever relevance you have in your profile, in your background, in your industry. That's the approach, right? Um, you're, you're going for on LinkedIn, you're going for um, a connection, right? You want to get these people to lower their shields, be in your network, open themselves up to uh, the beginning of a conversation. Then after they accept, right down the road, view the profile, get back to top of mind and send a casual note, right? Maybe you find a common point of overlap in their profile, but you're, you're not being salesy. You're not trying to push your own value. You're not trying to, to push your, your own agenda. It's just a casual note, um, acknowledging the connection, uh, great to be in the network. The aim of this is to begin a conversation, right? To start moving this prospect down the funnel, um, earn trust, and then start building value. You wanna get them to you know, take a look at your profile. Um, who are you? Ideally, if you set your profile up correctly, as we've covered in other webinars, um, your profile will, will quickly speak to what their pain point is. So you're gonna be relevant and you'll be more likely to get that reply to get the, uh, the ball rolling on an initial conversation. If you don't get that reply, um, have someone in a list, if you're using a CRM, set a task, you want to reach back out to that person at some point in the process. Again, we're aiming for 30 days from dirt to dinner table with this, right? So you don't wanna wait six weeks for this, this message, you wanna wait, wait a week. And then you can go back in, you've been viewing their profile here and there, not, not too much, you know, no more than a couple times because you don't wanna be creepy, but they've seen you. Um, they know, they know you're out there, you're top of mind because you've just sent a message a few days ago or a week ago. That's when you want to go in and clearly state your value proposition, right? Not a sale, but state your value prop, how it's relevant to them, right? So in a message that you know, is clearly relevant to the prospects, if it's a business owner um, and you're a business intermediary, it's going to be something along the lines of, you know, just an introductory note to um, let you know um, I work with exit planning and business valuation. If you'd ever like to reach out for an introductory chat and hear about how I work with HVAC owners like yourself, something like that, very specific, feel free to reach out. And you wanna have your, your call to action. You wanna have your, your phone number in there. Not too much, not your phone number and your email and your website, but your phone number, a, a way that, that they can reach out to you right then and there um, should be in that, that LinkedIn message. From there, to move your prospects down the funnel, right? to continue to familiarize them with your brand, who you are, what you do, how you solve their problems, you're going to be posting as we've discussed in other webinars, right? So you wanna, this is, this is the difference between you know, committing random acts of social and pursuing a, a focused social selling program. If you are focused on your primary prospects and referral prospects and your posting is designed not only to educate them about you know, their pain points, but to establish yourself as a qualified authority in that niche, as a qualified solution to their problems. That's the goal of posting. So you're sharing articles that are relevant to your end prospect. You're making comments that help establish you as that qualified authority. So your prospects will see this on an ongoing basis, on an ongoing basis. And then there's always strategic engagement, right? So that's, <clears throat> If you have a very high value prospect, um, you should save them to a list in Sales Navigator, create a list called high value prospects and save everybody who you think is high value to that list and go into Sales Navigator once a day and you'll see the activity of everybody saved in that list. So if they're posting something, if they're commenting on something, that gives you a window of opportunity to strategically engage with that prospect 
um, without being salesy, right? To offer value on the same post that they engaged with, to comment on their article, um, you know, moving them down the funnel, familiarizing them with your brand, establishing yourself as that qualified authority. Now, from there, we want to ideally take these, these prospects off channel, right? You wanna get them off LinkedIn, you wanna have them in a newsletter. If you're running a newsletter, <clears throat> the main goal of a newsletter for people who don't have that as part of their, their outreach process, I mean, one, you wanna stay top of mind, but this is the education and consideration phase of the funnel that I spoke about last week, right? So you want to educate them about in their industry, about your solutions, about what it is that you do, but you also have, a, you want to have a clear call to action at various points in the newsletter. So if you have a newsletter at the bottom, you should always have some sort of button or call to action with your contact info that clearly states, you know, give me a call to have a confidential conversation about what your exit options might be, right? Um, reach out now for your free business valuation, something along those lines. If you have blog posts within your newsletter, ideally those are going to your own website and each post has that clear CTA underneath the, the post. So if you have specific posts that are relevant to your end prospect at that time, right? Maybe you have a blog post about business valuation, your prospect clicks through to that, you're gonna be much more likely to get that conversion because you're, 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 you have a CTA that's geared towards business valuation on a blog post about business valuation that is being read by a prospect who clearly is interested in business valuation at that moment. So it's just getting hyper specific as you move down the funnel. Um, actually, let me keep going with that. The direct email is also really great, right? So again, hopefully you're using a, a CRM and you're managing all of this and you can set tasks and, and do all of this. <clears throat> um, or you know, you're, you're engaged with an agency like ours where we're helping you manage this, this process. But the, the direct email is a great way to get people off of LinkedIn, right? Send out the acknowledgement of, um, your, of being in each other's network with your contact info, clear call to action, right? So maybe LinkedIn isn't the best channel to stay in communication. So you reach out and give them your email contact info and let them know that's the best way to stay in touch going forward. If you wanna have a conversation about insert value proposition, feel free to reach out, right? That follow-up email, if you can do that with every contact who, who you bring into your online ecosystem, it's very valuable. Um, and then ultimately, what we've seen really work really, really well in this new environment, even though we're all sick of Zoom, right? You guys are still on this webinar, <clears throat> it works. Um, if you have a webinar and you can use that as an excuse to invite your prospects to this webinar that is highly relevant to them, of course, right? It's not a random webinar. It's, it's relevant to your prospects needs and pain points. It, it's going to add value. Then you can not only have the webinar, but you can have you know, the lead up to the webinar. You can email them a few days before the webinar and ask if they have any questions that they'd like you to answer during the Q&A. You can follow up after the webinar and have a, a, a clear call to action. Thanks for, thanks for attending the webinar. If you want to chat one-on-one -on -one about your exit options, um, please reach out. Here's my info, et cetera. So you've already moved them down the funnel and that's when you've earned the right to make a direct ask to really, to really go for that conversion. So um, moving on to referral prospect, basically same prospect, same process I just went through. You just want to make sure that when you're stating your value proposition, you're, you're letting them know what your relevance is, what your clear overlap is related to your shared target prospect, right? So if you're a business broker and you're approaching an accountant or if you're pro approaching a financial advisor, like financial advisor is a good one. Um, you know, clearly if, if they have business owner clients who are in need of an exit plan, that's going to be of interest to you. And you know, maybe you have some business owner clients who are in need of, you know, financial advisor services, there's, there's a clear overlap. So you, you, you want to highlight that in your messaging and get the phone call. And then, you know, again, in this environment, if you can coordinate on a webinar, um, that's, that's gold if you can do it well to target your, your shared primary prospect. Um, and this is a great way 
to very quickly develop that referral flywheel, right? The, the referral pipeline that's going to be more valuable than your primary prospect pipeline over time. You just very clearly articulate where you have overlap and how you can help each other to reach your shared target prospect. Contact strategy for email. Now, there are a lot of, this could be its own lunch and learn. And um, if you want it to be, let me know in, in the comments. Um, as always, you'll, you'll have um, a follow-up survey asking what you liked, you know, what, what you didn't like. So if this is something you want us to, to dive into, we, we can do that. But email is a great channel for being direct, right? So if you're doing a direct approach, stating your value proposition, this is who I am, you know, this is, this is what I do, are you interested? Again, it all starts with your targeting, making sure that you're, you're going after the exact target who you wanna hit. Um, you've scrubbed out all of the, the targets who don't make sense. You're making your, your email approach highly personalized, but then it can be direct. And you know, ideally you're doing some A-B testing, you're, you're testing a couple different approaches to see which one works well before you really hit the gas. Um, but you know, certain things with email, the, the direct approach and then following that up with a reply all basically, right? You wanna make sure that your entire chain is, is in the reply so the prospect can see that you've made some attempts here, but you know, follow up four or five days later circling back to put this back at the top of your inbox, of your inbox um, we like to hop on the line and, and, and have a chat. Um, and then you maybe you have some other emails in between, but I personally like three email drips. So you, you know, that's, that's what you want to do. You just make sure everyone is very relevant. Make sure everyone is performing well. Um, your last email should always be the, the closeout email where um, it's clear that you were closing out this prospect. So if they have, if they have any intention um, of speaking with you and they've just been you know, dealing with their priorities of their daily life, so they haven't had the bandwidth, if you send out the, the closing out your file email, the you know, closing, closing you out, um, you know, did I lose you? Something that clearly um, articulates that you're, you're out of here. This is the last email unless they respond. If you're doing that the right way, you get a high conversion. Um, and you know, some other strategies, making sure that you're, you're resending emails to anybody who hasn't, un, who hasn't opened the email, right? So you can send somebody a direct email and if they haven't opened it, then you can resend that with a different subject line to make sure that you're, you're maximizing exposure to your target prospect. So that's it. That's, um, that's what we're going through today. Again, we'll try to keep these short. Um, if anybody has any, any questions, and um, you want to ask, you can pop in the Q&A right now and go through that, or um, you know, we'll have these, these videos up on the, the website uh, within the next few days, as always. And if you have any feedback, you can just let us know what you want us to focus on going forward uh, with these other Lunch and Learns. So I'll give it a minute here, and if anybody has any questions, we can address those, and if not, we'll just move on as always. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, you can email me directly. Please com complete the survey um, so we can know what's going to be valuable, what's not going to be valuable going forward. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks, guys.